Hi, everybody. Welcome to the our monthly talk at the Sassy Museum of Art. Um, and this this month, we're we're talking to um, we're, we're taking a look at uh, the Sassy uh, exhibition of of Irish artists, and we have uh, several Irish artists with us. And um, I wonder if you could all just introduce yourselves. Maybe starting with with Morris. Ah, good morning. Uh, my name is Morris Quillenan. I live in Limerick in Ireland. Um, I'm the curator we, of, for this exhibition of 13 Irish artists at the Sasa Museum. Okay, and, and Una. Hi everybody, um, I'm Una Seeley and I'm a Dublin-based artist. Uh, it's the middle of the night here, and, uh, but I'm really delighted to have been asked to to join with our friends across the Atlantic there and in from China as well, and maybe some other places, and uh, just to take the opportunity to thank uh, Jean Sassy and um, Morris uh, Quillenan for curating this fantastic exhibition that I'm absolutely thrilled to be involved and in. it's just a wonderful um, a digital catalogue that's been produced that maybe you'll all have a, a chance to look at. It's it's really, really well done. And in, we're in the company of 13 very uh, different, um, but um, kind of a group of contemporary Irish artists that gives a really interesting overview of different uh, concerns, different media and different, uh, just different ways of looking at the world. So thank you very much, everybody. Um, Abigail. Hi everybody, it's wonderful to be here with you all this, this morning and um, thank you very much for including me in this exhibition. I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled to be part of it. Um, I think it gives a very broad reach to what's happening in Ireland and um, it's a very important group of artists. Um, I live and work in Ireland. Um, I'm a bit of a bag lady in that I move between two places. My studio is in Dundalk, which is just outside Dublin. And I'm also president of the Royal Hibernian Academy, which I hope one day you'll all get a chance to come and visit once we're past this awful phase in life. Um, so um, thank you very much. It's great to be here with you all. And thank you, Jean, for including me. Uh, and Nia. Hi, thank you, Jean. Um, and it's great to, to see you in person. Uh, or, um, sorry, this is John. I beg your pardon, John. And yeah. um, uh, I, I don't know if you can see me or not. I, I'm, I've had problems with my camera here. Um, I am very thrilled to be part of this exhibition. I've been living in China for the last 11 years. Uh, I know uh, a number of the artists participating. I met um, Morris and Una a few years ago when they were in China. And uh, I know Abigail of, from a previous exhibition uh, back in April. Um, uh, just really glad to be in this exciting kind of position where, uh, as uh, Una has said, uh, a very different mix of artists can come together and, um, and create maybe a, a new dialogue. Um, so I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. All right. well, th thank you, Niamh. And we can see you well. Uh, you you're very okay. clear. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. And we can all feel your gorgeous art on your walls. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, okay, um, so I'm, I'm so thrilled to be a part of this, and uh, Morris and I uh, talked for, for a little while a couple of days ago, and I'm, I'm thrilled as to the, the, the projects that you all seem to be engaged in, uh, projects that seem to be breaking down barriers and uh, taking retaking a look at the concept of, of borders and other barriers as well, and I know that um, Abigail, uh, you, 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 are, are, you, you are the president of the Royal Hibernian Academy, and I understand the part of your your passion, your mission is breaking down gender uh, disparity. Absolutely. Within, uh huh. I want you to you could is is your art about that as well? Is that is that do you see that as a, as administrative or kind of the total person? I think, um, I think it's important. It's very important to me to. I I spent my last twenty five years looking at the the role of women in the world and. Um, our place, how we are uh, situated, what, what sort of things we get involved in, how we are, are um, uh, 
yeah, how we are placed in the world. And um, my recent project, I suppose, has been the most political. I, I'm not that interested in being um, a political artist per se, um, but sure, you can't avo avoid it really, you know. And um, so this project that's um, part of this exhibition is um, to do with the Me Too movement and um, what has happened to a lot of people, uh, a lot of women in particular, um, around the, the um, situation of men in power. And um, I was, I got the opportunity some time ago to work in the Aston Martin factory. Um, and initially I was just blown away by the absolutely magnificent space that I was in and the beautiful cars that were being made and the whole um, shiny edifice of it. Uh, but I didn't want to make a body of work that was simply about the cars, like they didn't need me anyway to be advertising for them. Um, yeah. And I've been working on a project called the uh, the Cardinal Virtues, which are prudence, temperance, fortitude, and justice. Mm -hmm. And this was my last um, project in that series, which was it became justice. But I hadn't a notion for. I mean, it's taken fifteen years to realize the project. And for 15 years, I've been looking for justice in the world and hadn't been able to identify it until um, the Me Too movement actually highlighted it for me. It, it, it got me thinking about it. And particularly when finally Harvey Weinstein was brought to justice and, um, and, and put in prison for what he did to the women who he had been abusing in Hollywood. And, um, yeah, so that's um, how I got to make this this body of work. Well, as I'm flipping through these, I'm I'm seeing the titles of these paintings and um, uh, uh, photographs, I should say, not paintings. Um, mm -hmm. And are, do these come from anything specific, or are they just in the air? No, no, they they I, I don't know. Um, most of you will have watched at some point a James Bond movie, <laughs> and uh, James Bond. Um, comes out with some extraordinary statements around the women who he's, you know, in, involved with in his character, um, with the party, the role he plays. And, um, and most of them are pretty distasteful, but sometimes they can also be quite funny, um, you know. And I was able to place the statements along with the photographs that I had taken of the cars. Um, and sometimes, you know, um, when I'm making work, it seems to me that I'll be the only person who will be able to see what's, you know, um, silly about it or funny or whatever, but a lot of people seem to get it. I mean, this one here, put your clothes back on and I'll buy you a lollipop. Mm. And it's like, you know, the, the car is being undressed or has been undressed. These are the leathers that they use in the factory to protect the car when they're working on it. And um, <clears throat> I, I actually, I was very blessed. I was, I, I, as I say, I didn't want to make a body of work that was simply about, you know, the beauty of the Aston Martin. And I needed to find something that would iterate the, the um, collapse of Harvey Weinstein and his career. <laughs> and I was very lucky to buy, to be able to get a wrecked Aston Martin oh. by chance um, on the internet. And so this uh, image on the right is that, um, destroyed volante sounds very exotic doesn't it mm. yeah yeah well and, and talk about a um a, a symbol of of male aggression uh the aston martin and the you know the car in itself it's yeah that's... it's a symbol of power and excess and all kinds of things you know um uh -huh. and um yeah and to me it was harvey weinstein encapsulate mm -hmm. you know <clears throat> interesting it is is uh, okay so speaking as a uh, uh an american person is the royal hiberian academy uh, is it has it been closed off to women before you um well for a long time it has been a boys club there's no doubt about that but i'd say in the last 10 years um i mean una will speak about it too because una is secretary of the academy uh mm -hmm. in the last 10 years um we have been very blessed to have uh, a lot of fantastic Irish women artists who have become members. 
and in order to become a member, you have to be voted in by the membership. Um, mm. So it's taken time, but we're getting there. And it's been certainly my mission to, by the time we're 200 years old, which is in 2023, to have mm. um, a sense of balance, gender balance in the academy. Because mm. certainly in Ireland, some of the best artists are female artists. There's no doubt about that. And maybe that's the case in, in America too. I'm sure. Um, uh, what, what is the, how, how many people are in the, the Royal Academy? Altogether, there's a membership of it, Una, correct me here. There's, yeah, there's, 50, there's 55 members. So, 55, yeah. um, so it's actually a very small membership group, but, mm -hmm. um, it, but the Academy, the artist members of the Academy work towards furthering the arts in Ireland in general by running a whole um, a raft of exhibition program, uh, education. We have, an, we have a school and academy where I'm a tutor at that. Um, so the membership itself is really quite small, but its it reach is actually uh, quite large in Ireland as a important national institution. I'll give you an example. I mean, we have this exhibition every year, the annual open exhibition where artists can apply from any part of the world to have their work included in our exhibition. And in the exhibition itself would be all the Academy members, invited artists as well, but quite a, a large number of artists who have applied to be part of it. And this year, in terms of sales, we made over half a million in, mm. in sales, which all goes back to the artists. So it's a very much an artist centered um academy oh, oh that, that that's interesting and um and so how how you, you've been bringing in women and and having them be part of the, the academy more and more how many women do you have as, as a part of the academy now do you, do you know offhand we're something like uh four women artists off balance so i think we've got what, uh -huh. 20, 26 26 women at the moment and uh yeah so we're, we're we're not doing too badly i mean we're re if you like we're we're undoing years of um a lack of balance yeah. you know and yeah. um we can only invite members in to the academy when a place comes up so when someone dies for example then there's a vote oh wow that is a slow process yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thankfully it is a slow process exactly yeah so uh, Abigail is the first uh, female president of the academy, and it's you know it's almost two hundred years old. So um, wow. that'll show you the uh, <laughs> what it's been an uphill battle. And, and you know you, you are the uh, secretary, am I correct? Yeah, I'm the secretary now. But we're uh, Abigail and I are both uh, full time artists. So our roles in the academy, we, there is a full time executive staff who work uh -huh. there. So um, our, our roles are much more kind of like uh, overseeing the whole thing. So, um, so I'm the secretary. So I'm the, um, I guess I'm kind of the curator of the annual open exhibition and I'm the editor of the catalog, uh, the annual catalog, et cetera. So, um, so, so yeah, so Abigail and I are actually at the moment extremely active in the academy. Um, and uh, it's uh, like, it's, it's a real honor to be part of it. I mean, these are voluntary positions, but um, they're, uh, it's just, uh, it's quite a privilege to, to be able to, uh, to make a difference at that level uh -huh. um, in a major institution. We have a very magnificent um, exhibition space in the city center of Dublin. It's one of the best exhibition spaces in Ireland, actually. Absolutely. Yeah. It's so like it has one, two, three, four, five. It has six galleries. Uh, it has a school, um, which is a, and it has a accredited courses, um, accredited by one of the Dublin universities. Um, so it really and has. Studio, yeah, and studio spaces, which which artists are invited to or can apply for. And uh -huh. Morris, Morris has show, shows with this practically every year, I think, Morris, don't you, Leo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you, Esson. Going, going through I'm the, very the open, to show there. Well, well done, because you come through the open submission and, and <laughs> we're delighted to have you, which is fantastic. The other Thanks, interesting Abigail. thing about the open is 
that it's done anonymously. So there's a, a six um, artists from the academy would um, be part of the selection. And mm. um, but there's no names, okay? Obviously, we, we don't want to know people's names. So the work is selected on the basis of its, um, you know, uh, the standard of work in front of us. So, uh, and that's very important, I think. So you get some great surprises coming through, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and Una, it sounds like uh, you, you do you have very different kind of art than than Abigail, but it seems to have so similarities in mission. Am, am I correct about that? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think Abigail and me would probably think alike on a lot of things, but I focus much more. I kind of channel my uh, my kind of my ideas and my politics on a very domestic level through my uh, own surroundings, my family, my friends, and my where I live, my children, uh, etc. So I, I try to address universal themes, but through specific uh, subject matter. So I, I work from life. So I, my, my portraits are all done from life, um, but they always have a, an idea behind them that's trying to capture uh, something that is feels to me is of concern at the moment uh, that it would be um, it's concerns particular to these people these are young people there that I've painted uh, but they would be so, uh, they would sort of appeal to a more universal uh, sense of uh, stages of life mm -hmm. um, you just go to the back of the slide previous slide there John um, the one you just showed a minute ago can you go back one? Yeah, so those are both portraits of uh, my daughter. On the left, it's called, it's called, the name of that painting is, the title is Last Summer. So it was the last summer that she was in uh, high school and mm -hmm. just about to sit her final school exams, had applied for art college, but was full of uncertainty about the future. And um, I just wanted to sort of to, to, to sort of freeze that moment in time of a the life of an 18 year old girl in an uh, in a Dublin suburb that was specific to her, but in a way was a universal um, uh, a kind of concern. And the painting on the right is called Daughter of the Swan, and that that was based on there's a Yeats. A W.B. Yeats poem called Among School Children. And that's inspired by a line out of the poem where uh, it's referring to, uh, to Leda and the Swan, which is the, the, from mythology. And there's a, there's a phrase in the, the poem that goes, even, even daughters of the swan, hold on a sec, <laughs> uh, that uh, I just read the quote because it's just a, uh, uh, I can't get it, I can't find it now, but it's a quote from that, uh, the Yeats poem, and it just really kind of spoke to me about um, the, the, the kind of the, the fragility of girl of that age going out into the world, also then painted when she was 18, and uh, with a sort of feather floating around in front of her, which is sort of signifying the, uh, the swan. Uh -huh. And um, so if you just go to the next slide there again, John, sorry. Um, the, 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 the portrait on the left is, um, is of my son. And uh -huh. uh, again, it's an, it, was, it, was, it was sort of like um, to paint my son and in the previous slide, my daughter, both with their eyes closed and um, it sort of subverts the idea of portraiture where you're looking straight out at the audience I feel that if the eyes are closed it it appears that that young person is more has gone more inwards into their own thoughts um, and then the the painting on the right is a a self-portrait um, it was in a, a studio that I had a, a residency in last year at a city a studio in the city centre and that actually is a, a kettle that 
Abigail uh, lent me for the residency, mm -hmm. in, or she donated it to that studio. It's probably still there, Abigail, is it? Even though I'm I not. It might be. <laughs> yeah, I'm very taken by that kettle because any kettle in my own house would be so smeared with greasy fingerprints that there would be absolutely no reflection in it. <laughs> so when I was presented with this shiny brand new kettle, I, I suddenly thought, oh, that's a fantastic way to to paint a portrait uh, of myself. I hate doing self-portraits, but it's distorted enough in the, in the kettle that you couldn't really see. But it also shows, it gives a, uh, a fisheye lens of the whole room in that city centre studio. So it kind of, for me, it sort of um, was preserving in time that my memory of having that artist in residency and that particular. Thank you. Not my not my dog. <laughs> <laughs> Not mine either. <laughs> I can see. I can see. I can see what you're saying about your use of light and your uh, different approaches to in, in all of these actually, but especially in that kettle. Yeah. And, um, and actually, you know, Una's very modest. To get that studio was quite a feat because there would be huge competition to be part of that studio in the center of Dublin and one of the kind of the, the best spots in Dublin because you're right near Trinity College, you're right near Stephen's Green, you're right in the middle of everything. So it mm. was a wonderful um, uh, achievement for Una to be there. Yeah, well, sometimes it's just nice to get out of your normal workspace, you know, um, mm. and uh, you sort of see things differently because I, I live out, in, I live in a fishing village about 10 miles outside Dublin. And it's like a very small town place. And uh, so just nice to go and have six months in a city, a studio, bang in the city centre. It sort of changes the way you look at things. You know, I think it's always good for artists to, to change, just change their environment. Sometimes you find new ways of working. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and, I, you know, I, I'll get, Morris, I, I promise I'm gonna ask you a question here in a minute, but. Um, oh, no, 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 it's a sudden, I'm just <laughs> sorry about me in front. Uh, Morris, Morris has just finished building his own studio, which nice, is fabulous, yeah. haven't you, Morris? Yeah. Oh, lovely. Yeah, 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 no, bless, no, a very fine studio space here now, absolutely, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's great, so it's nice to have a home. Well, I mean, I've had studios before, but at a solid base here now, so I'm good. Good. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, 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 I, I tend to work from my kitchen, you know, I have a room in the house, but um, I've never really had a proper studio outside the home. And mm. I think at this stage in my life, I probably wouldn't be able for a studio outside. You know, I'm, I'm so used to the, the in and out of the domestic realm, you know, put on mm. a, a washer, clean the toilet in the middle no. of the Thinking. <laughs> but that's I'm always very really amicable on the, these kind of things. You do you do not do housework? You do, don't do housework. Don't do any housework. <laughs> well, it works for me. And, and, but my husband comes in every now and again and says, "Any chance of dinner?" I oh, don't know. <laughs> Make it yourself. <laughs> Well, speaking of, of studios, uh, Nia, are, 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 do you have a studio in Beijing? Um, uh, I work from a, a room. Um, I've been, uh, my family have been very accommodating. I've chosen the largest room in the flat that we rent uh, for my studio. It's actually a complete mess right now. So I, I could, and I all, took down all my portraits that were hanging up there installed now uh, elsewhere. So uh, I, we're not in our, the studio room at the moment. We're in, in the main family room. But um, I did share a studio space in one of the villages outside Beijing, Songzhuan, but that's been kind of um, torn down and rebuilt again. It's becoming a, an administrative um, area now. And uh, so there's a lot of um, upheaval with studio spaces here in Beijing. Mm. So in the end, it, I've always felt it better to just work from home. If I can claim a, a room in the place, then I'm fine, you know. But I do actually, uh, you know, when Una was saying about uh, going on residencies and being uh, completely in a different place to work uh, can be very, very productive because um, 
pulling away from um, yeah. a home studio space, you're uh, surrounded by a completely different um, area. Uh, last month I was in Yunnan, which was like a, a next door to a trop the largest tropical forest, um, protected tropical forest in China. And that was an amazing experience. It was only for two weeks, but um, yeah, you, you work uh, very intensely during those two weeks and uh, you get to see and uh, taste the surroundings as well. So uh, these are all great experiences, the residencies when you can get them. Well, and I see that's really influenced your work as well. Um, like in, in this picture with the, the painting, the, the Ginkgo Palace. Um, yes, the, the, the Sucro series there, um, that, that's actually uh, a photographic uh, media uh, printed on cotton paper. Uh, sometimes I sew on the paper afterwards before um, reworking again with a mixture of uh, sugar and other elements and sometimes added color as well. Um, so that it's a, it's, a, it's a photographic process then mixed in with mixed media. Um, uh, but yes, I did a series of paintings on ginkgos as well a few years back. Um, but uh, the sucrose series is, is very much an exploration of, of technique. Um, I remember also a few years back uh, looking very carefully at the changes and being very excited um, seeing that um, the crystallization was actually pushing some of the ink that was lifted off the surface. So it made me feel the painting process continues with the crystallization. I was so excited with that notion, you know, that uh, it's it still continue the, the painting continues after the creation event. Um, but um, I'm, I'm still working on the Sucrose series, but probably not as intensely as I was a, a couple of years ago. Oh, that's interesting. You know, as a, as a non-artist, um, I'm, I'm, I'm curious about how the sh sugar is functioning here. Um, well, it's, it, it, some, mo well, yeah, some of the, um, the uh, cotton layers that I work with are layered uh, up to seven or eight times. And there's just a couple that have only one or two layers. Um, but the most exciting layer is the first layer uh, because that's when uh, I actually try and lift um, the color, both the digital print off a little bit from the surface and release it into the mixture. Um, it doesn't all, it's not always that it's successful. It depends how freshly uh, the, the, the print was made on the, on the, the paper. Um, but yeah, there's different layers going on. The layer closer to the print is, I think, quite exciting, but it's, uh, that's why it's important for me to photograph the process. Sometimes I make gifts out of uh, the changes that occur over a period of uh, a couple of months. And, um, and then the other layer is the outer kind of, uh, the outer crenellation of sugar, um, which is what we see in the end. Um, mm. Oh. Leave, did you have people trying to lick lick them at the uh, Beijing? <laughs> yes, there's loads loads of poses with with liquors. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> all all part of the uh, exhibition history photos. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, Neve, you're from a you know you're from a science background, so you know you're bringing a whole new layer of technique to all this that is quite amazing. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, they're evolving, I did, or keep on evolving like a petri dish or something. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, I, I do like to try and push a little bit further, but um, but I, it was really mostly painting for the first 10, 15 years, um. And then I felt, you know, uh, okay, let's let's try some techniques that I've always wanted to work on. And that recent um, um, uh, kind of collaboration with the Institute of Process Engineering was a very interesting one because I found myself back in the laboratory. Now I'm not a bio, med, a bio uh, a microbiologist, but I did spend many years in medical labs in hospitals uh, mm. uh, uh, before uh, my travels. And um, so, uh, yeah, growing in Petri dishes was, uh, was an interesting collaboration. Uh, unfortunately, that, that's the thing. One thing I think artists find very difficult is, you know, uh, like, you know, um, full-time practitioners like yourself and Abigail, trying to um, 
build up collaborations with institutions is, is quite difficult. And um, that's why I was very, very thrilled to, to be able to access these uh, laboratories with uh, an, another researcher uh, to, to work on, on these uh, microbe art uh, processes for a little while. And then afterwards we, we took it to, we took two or three workshops uh, to a secondary school and um, introduced them uh, microbe art uh, uh, workshops. <clears throat> that. So that, that, that was an interesting process. Um, fascinating. Um, yeah, absolutely fascinating. Um, uh, and so, so you're, you're really m mixing the scientific method with, with, uh, with, with the art, right? Uh, kind of lost uh, way well, of hearing. Yeah, all right, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I try, I try to, to, to keep in touch with, with I mean, I've, all my, most of my science um, knowledge is, is changed anyway. It's, it's kind of um, irrelevant at this stage with all the changes going on. But um, I guess I just want to explore and push just like any other artist and, uh, and see what I can do and what, what my resources are and push forward. And, um, you know, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. But, um, May I ask a question? Are you planning sure. on staying in uh, Beijing for for like the foreseeable future? Uh, I'd say we, yeah, uh, we've no plans to leave. But uh, you know, you're never really sure. Sure, you know, we were only going to stay for a couple of years, and now it's eleven, <laughs> and wow. now we live, and now again we live in a different world. So where where there are other new uncertainties. So. Um, uh, but we hope, I, I hope I'm here for another four or five years. That would be great. Um, you know that the College of uh, Science, the... the um, yes, the yes. Yeah, in, yes. In, uh, in UCG, do residencies. I'm sure they'd love you to come and apply. Oh, yeah. oh yes, yes, that's true. Yes, yeah. Mm. Okay, yeah. I, I have been looking at one a, a couple of their exhibitions up to a point and then I think they, they stopped. But yes, I, I, I must look into that. Thank you for, for pointing that out, Abigail. Yeah, I will. That's great. When you're coming back. <laughs> yeah, we'll check it out for sure. Thank yeah. you. Well, uh, Morris, I've kind of left you to, to the end here. I'm, I'm the, the last person oh, to think yeah. on purpose. <laughs> and uh, that's because I, I, I know part of your mission is uh, seeing beyond the concept of border and bring people together. And you've helped us to, to unite uh, North America with Asia, with Europe. Um, and I, I think that's a part of your art as well, that this idea, this idea of universality. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I suppose similar to, to um, Abigail and Una, um, I, I suppose you know I've had a, you know quite a lot of opportunities over the years to promote what's going on here in Ireland. Um, I think we've extraordinary artists here, and um, my thing is the, I suppose the conversation. You know, we started this conversation. We've other ones going with um, um, ten artists from Hangzhou um, coming to Limerick, and then we've big project coming up with the Ukraine. Uh, my own work is based around I suppose the philosophical idea that you know what. This, uh, I suppose around, back around the time of the, the Big Bang, we had this huge ball of gas that ended up here and the DNA of, of everything that it came from is in this and it's gradually kind of working its way back. So my thing is, I suppose, that everything is trying to reform itself to what it once was. So, so all the work is layered and um, you, know, you can work your way back through the layers. So it's it. There's a sort of a DNA memory about things. You know, you've you've got um, the landscape, all the different things that sort of happened in a landscape, um, all the different things that say happened to a person. You know, for me, I can't put them all into one piece. So what I'm trying to do is kind of layer as many over it. Um, yeah, I was I was in the Ukraine before for Christmas, and um, there was an extraordinary sense of being in the past and being in the present at the same time because so much of history is actually alive there at the moment, and it really brought home to me um, what I'm trying to do uh, within the work itself. I'm particularly interested in in the um, an Italian philosopher Andre Amo. Uh, he didn't publish anything dur during his life, but he's kind of wor wor working along sort of similar themes. I'd certainly be hugely influenced by him. Um, 
music very much in, in, interests me. Um, I was in um, uh, Washington a, a number of years ago and the hotel where we were staying, the taxi was driving up towards it. It drove through this incredible sea of plastic tents um, and the people in the hotels afterwards, a lot of them were, were veterans who had fought in Afghanistan and, and Iraq. And it just seemed extraordinary that all this history was there. Um, so that influenced the whole series I did based around, um, around that, that particular experience. But uh, I suppose my main effort or my main um, idea for curating things is to bring people together um, because we've all got stories to tell no matter where, where we're going. It's such a tiny world now at the moment. Um, you can take a painting, a drawing, a photograph, whatever, no matter what language you speak, um, somebody out there will understand what, what you're doing. So um, it's a privilege to be able to go to, the, to you know, places all, you know, all over the world and um, bring you know, Irish art. Um, I try and include new artists um, all the time in it. We're getting somebody's music, you can turn that off. Sorry, if I may say, John, also, I mean, Morris is very, um, uh, you know, he, he never blows his own trumpet. He's one of the most fantastic guys in Ireland who actually has encouraged and included many, many, many of us artists in different exhibitions. And I, for one, am very grateful to him for doing that. Oh, very yeah. kind. Thanks very much, Abigail. Appreciate yes. that. Very true. Mm -hmm. Would you say he's he's breaking down international borders, but internal borders as well? Well, absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and he does it. He, you know, you 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 might look at a, an exhibition that that uh, Morris curates and think, gosh, that's a very interesting um, group because we we all might be coming from different places, different perspectives, but somehow he manages to get it to gel um, because in a way it's all about. Um, trying to make sense of the world, you know? Mm. Mm. Absolutely, mm. yeah. Mm. Uh, that, that's interesting. I think, the, thing, the thing I like is, is you know, you, you can walk into, say, um, an opening somewhere and you don't know anybody there. And, you know, at, at some stage, you kind of, you know, strike up a conversation with somebody and it just kind of builds. So we've got all these, you know, unique pieces of art going to, going to different places and they're striking up conversations with different artists um, and you know we're being influenced by what's going on there and I know that certainly the artists that we've, we've met abroad are certainly influenced by by what we're doing so it's, it's just a brilliant conversation that just keeps growing all, all, all the time. What is, is it fair to say you're expressing your art in two different ways one is on a canvas and one is through community? Yeah, very much so, very much so. I, I see the two as the same thing. I mean, you know, um, the, the paintings, the drawings and prints are, you know, a visual way of talking. And, you know, now here we are talking in, in, in this way. Um, what I really like about these kind of conversations is, you know, the ideas and, you know, the methodology and, and the philosophy of, of, of each of the artists is fantastic. I just, I, just, I just love that information that comes and it's lovely to see um and to hear people talk about their work it's it's very exciting mm. um I, I'm, I'm a person who, who loves art about fishing so i've stopped here on purpose and i wonder <laughs> if you can describe this painting to us <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um it's a place in um called loch Derg. it's um, ireland's biggest um in, inland lake and um the friend of ours who comes back there from dublin every year to go pike fishing and um he doesn't eat the pike what he, what he does is he prepares the, he catches the pike, um, prepares them and drops them around to, to friends who, li who live along the lake. And um, it's basic, this was the largest pike I've ever seen. He dropped in last, last, last summer. I think we got three dinners from it, it was huge. And, um, <laughs> Have you was, ever done the, the pilgrimage to Loch Derg? No, no, it, it's, it's actually, I did for yeah. Abigail, this is, this is in, oh. in, in uh, County Clare, but no, I, oh, have, right. I actually haven't been up, up to Holy Island. I keep thinking of going every year, but um, <laughs> so, well, because of COVID, it, has, it has, hasn't actually worked out. But this is above Mount Shannon, above Killaloo, um, okay. kind of that, 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 that direction. Mm -hmm. But um, fantastic fishing along, along, along the lake. I, I don't fish, um, I did as a kid, but I certainly don't do it anymore. But this painting was in a sense kind of a tribute to that pike, I just thought he was such a magnificent creature. Um, you know, it was nice to do something for him. 
So that that's base, basically what what what, what that is. Um, the painting on the left there, um, Inception, was inspired by one of my favorite films, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, a film called Inception. Um, sure. It's just layers and layers and layers of, of ideas. Um, we we have today super string theory, and um, you know that's suggesting mathematically that we we'll, we have at least twelve layers of of reality, whereas we only only understand three dimensions. Where uh, according to this there are actually 12 dimensions so i just you know the, these kind of ideas of, of memory and things that exist that we don't quite understand i suppose is what i'm trying to work through on the work hmm. well that, that's great okay so um i'd like to open this up to any questions i'm sure you're all dying to ask questions as well um uh did anybody so happy to open up to anybody who has questions yeah kate I, I noticed, uh, by the way, Jean, this was just a stunning catalog, and I, I hope there will be a print version, and if there is, sign me up. Um, I, I see Christmas gifts for next year. This really was beautiful, beautiful piece of work all on its own. Um, but I, I noticed there are some poets here who are part of this um, art talk, and I'm wondering, I'd like to hear from the artists if, if any of you have ever worked with poets um, in um, either your art or in, in an, a, an exhibit where the art that you are displaying is accompanied by poetry that was inspired by your art. That's something that John probably won't uh, blow his own trumpet about, but he's very, very good at arranging those kinds of collaborations and they can really be um, marvelous. So I, I don't know if that has drifted across the pond to Ireland or not, but I'd, I'd just like to hear from you all. Well, I know Morris, uh, who is, you, you're very influenced by, by poetry, Morris, aren't you? Yeah, yeah very much yeah. so, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so Morris would probably much more to say on this than I have, but there is a, 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 a national exhibition in Ireland every year based on the poetry of W.B. Yeats. Uh, uh -huh. run in, yeah. in Sligo, which is the uh, the homeland of Yeats, uh, in a gallery called Hamilton Gallery. And they pick a Yeats poem every year and they ask, invite artists to respond to it. So one of my paintings we saw there, which was based on uh, among school children, was that painting. And then this year it was, uh, so we've also uh, responded to uh, Meditations in a Time of Civil War. That was last year's one. And going back, this is a, this has been a sort of a, a decade of Yeats uh, cent centenaries this year uh, for the last several years. So um, there's so that would be and, and it's been kind of interesting because it's actually brought me to poetry, really. <laughs> um, and I've actually found poetry. I found it actually it's a really fertile source of of um, inspiration. And uh, Boris, you probably got a lot more to say on this subject. I'm actually quite new to this, and I'm, but I'm really discovering uh, how poetry and visual art can work so well together. Well, I, I think the idea of a poem is it's, it's hugely um, cut down to, to the bare elements. Um, I'm very much influenced by the American uh, poet, Brian Turner. Um, he was a soldier during the, the Iraq war and he's, he's written some of the most extraordinary poetry um, that would he, I think would be comparable to any of the First World War uh, yeah. poets. Um, I'm reading a, a poem at the moment with the um, Al Alima Bridge and um, just the, I don't know, just the, the visual imagery he creates as people are falling off that bridge dur during a stampede um, is, is, is I, I find just just absolutely extraordinary. Um, I've, I've, I haven't printed poems besides the work, but certainly poetry would be a huge influence, that, that's for sure. Well, I've actually um, used some poetry in my own work, but I've written them myself. And, oh. um, maybe sewn them because I would work a lot in embroidery. And in Justice, with the last piece that I made, um, I wanted to make a kind of James Bond theme song for as my, um, as part of the installation. And my son is a singer songwriter, but he's actually really good. Bitches with wolves, uh, look him up, Bitches with wolves. And um, 
I had written this poem anyway about the experience of being in a kind of Me Too situation. And I sent it to him and asked him, could he put this to music? And of course, being the artist that he is, he took my poem and he put it to one side, you know, and he wrote his own poem from his own experience, which of course he had to do. And, um, and it was fantastic. It was a real anthem. Um, and it, it really brought the whole um, thing to life for me, you know, um, this, this music in the, in the art space, you know. It would be lovely to use your poem, um, Abigail, um, for, you know, a future project as part of your work. Maybe, but, but it's yeah. kind of got ditched because it, a better one came out, you know what I mean? Yeah, great. Uh, Excellent. I think. <laughs> <laughs> a collaborative, right? Yeah. Well, it seems to me you're, what, what you're all finding is what's universal within within the arts and art, art as well. Um, you know, and finding what, what is universal across countries as, as, as well. Um, uh, do, you, do you have anything coming up? Um, that, that you, you, Morris, you're saying you, ha you have more collaborations coming up. And I'm wondering what, what these are and what, what the, um, the uh, purpose is, if you have a mission or a goal or something. Yeah, well, we, we have a nice project coming up in uh, Ukraine um, that that will be it's scheduled for around June. And in fact, I was talking to to the director of the museum there in in uh, Lviv today. Um, her name is um, God. I'm trying, trying to pronounce her her, her name. Um, Lean um, Matesco. She's the director of the. Um, what you got the municipal um, contemporary arts gallery in um, in Lviv. It's one of the biggest art art spaces um, out there. And we were discussing various um, Ukrainian artists. We're going to pair with our own artists. Um, we're also going to try and work on maybe a book, um, possibly out of it as well. Um, there's also a project. We went to China back in October 2019, and um, we met um, city here in Limerick is twinned with Hangzhou in China. And um, we were introduced to a number of fantastic artists out there. And uh, so 10 of those artists will be coming to Limerick in April here. And um, we plan on pairing those with, with 10 Irish artists and seeing how we can build a rapport be be between them there. Uh, I've also got a couple of shows going to Austin, Texas and to San Francisco as well um, mm. in March. So there's a few few different things kind of kind of going on at the moment. Um, projects usually take a good couple of years to put together and to kind of build. So, um, you know, I think certainly some of the artists from, from went out to China um, built up some nice uh, contacts there. And when the COVID is over, I think things will open up very nicely for, for artists from both countries. Uh-huh. And what? please God, the Russians don't cross into, um, cross the border. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's, that's a huge problem at the moment, obviously. Um, and it, it, it's, a, it's a weird situation when you're there in a country knowing that, you know, it's going to be invaded by a superpower uh, at any minute. It's, there's, there's a very strange kind of feeling about it. Um, but yeah. fingers crossed it won't happen, all mm -hmm. you can say, I guess, you know. But it, it would be absolutely shame because you know it's it's such it's it's one of the most interesting countries I've, I've ever visited. Um, it's it's very technologically advanced, yet the past is very much present in, in terms of, of its its um, Soviet domination during during the for, for, for many many years. Great place. Yeah. Though. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, okay. So this is a question for all four of you. Um, we've been talking about how art is universal and how these universal there are universal themes but is there anything that's specifically irish uh, that we could say it's an irish feeling for the art or or something like that um is there any way that the the, the art is distinguished from other places well i mean I, I speak for myself and that is that i i, I do feel we live in a kind of cul-de-sac and um I, I'm constantly looking outward because um, it's much more interesting than just kind of looking at, you know, your own four walls or, you know, the space around you. But certainly I think there's a flavor within work that can't be denied, you know, it, whether it's part of your tradition, your um, spirituality, your, um, you know, culture, et cetera, that, 
that's naturally going to seep in because we're all speaking from our own experiences. So it's it's unavoidable, I think. So d would would you say that history becomes a kind of vocabulary, visual vocabulary? To some extent, yes. Yeah, it's all part of our <laughs> DNA, isn't it? You know. Yeah, and I think very much the Irish landscape as well. Even if you're not specifically a landscape painter, I think mm. it's there it's to be seen you know you can see it in Morris's work you know Morris lives uh close to the west of Ireland um you know and even Neve in Beijing you know and even though she's been away a long time it's it's still I think you you know that I think that I would you say that influence stays with you definitely Neve, yeah you? the the land and it's it's another it's another thing that I often think about is the great urbanization that's happening here and I can really feel it uh probably because of you know being Irish and that kind of uh, attachment to to the land, um, yeah, all these changes uh, are, are are affecting, I suppose, that that sense of identity. Mm. Mm. And really, when you're making work, anyway, I mean, I think it's so important to for it to be genuine that it has to come from inside and in, in your in your heart and soul. You know, you can't just make things up. Otherwise, it has a, a falseness to it, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. it's all there without being able to identify. I mean, I see it in your work, Luna, because you do a lot about, you know, the sea and swimming and your environment. It's, you, you know. Yeah. And, and like as Morris cold. said in his introduction in the catalogue, you know, he said that, you know, we're on it from a, a tiny island off mm. the west of Europe. And but that, you know, and that we have had we have been known to be a bit insular and a bit, um, you know, like Islander mentality. <laughs> yeah, we, I mean, we really have, I mean, like for our, say our parents generation, how they would have grown up was just like so different from our experiences now. And as Morris also says in his introduction, it's it's really the internet actually has opened up the, the the world of you know there isn't any you know art has just become so much so much more international now and it's it's not just European art which was always held up as the the pinnacle you know and now you know other cultures are reclaiming their rightful place in uh you know, in the international, uh, for international art recognition, which is brilliant. And deregulation of the airlines, if you think about it, because we, like beforehand, to get well, we all the to get so expensive, you couldn't, you know, <laughs> even to get to London would cost you like several weeks wages. Nowadays, mm. you can get off the island for 15, 20 euros, and it's fantastic, and long may it last, you know. <laughs> I'd like to see that come here. Wow, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. What do, do we? Does anybody have any follow-up questions? I've been I've been hogging the whole conversation. It doesn't look like anybody. Um, so th that might be a really really wonderful place to 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 stop. Um, Gene, do, do, what, what what do you have coming up next time? Um, not sure what the art talk is going to be next month. We do do it monthly on the third Saturday. Um, the next month in the museum, we have an exhibit uh, from a group of artists from Fullerton, which is the next county over from where we're located. And then the exhibit after that is um, a big exhibit we're going to be doing, <clears throat> excuse me, called Art and Stories, uh, where we're incorporating poetry stories and things along with art and stuff. So that one's just in the... Uh, production and putting together. And I really enjoyed putting this catalog together and, and, and getting to know um, the artists a little bit and seeing the work. And I really enjoyed a lot of the works. I wish we had some of the pieces in our collection, but um, anyway, it was just a joy uh, getting to know and working on it. And it uh, took a bit longer to complete than I anticipated, but things got sort of hectic for quite a while. So, but um, I want to thank you for for participating and also participating in the talk tonight and sharing your ideas and stuff and our audience is small in the art talks but still we have a lot of people that come back month to month that really enjoy it and and some interesting comments after they're over 
Yeah. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me to be part of this great um, well, event. Let's That's hope great. we get beyond COVID and we can bring everybody to uh, California. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'll be bringing my, my sunglasses and my bikini. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, I, I'd look, like to thank Jean for. Looks like sorry. Face, uh, Jean, and uh, it would be fantastic to come over and see it in person. And the museum is still relatively new. Um, and um, we're growing. We just moved into a larger space that's about 3,000 square feet. So um, come a long ways in the few years and building something from nothing with nothing, um, you know, to a collection of 1,400 pieces now that's been totally donated to us. So, wow. And we're going back to the 1700s. Wow. That's amazing. Great range. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to thank you, Jean, for doing an absolutely um, extraordinary uh, catalogue and uh, for your trust and faith in us. And um, thank <laughs> Abigail and Una and Neve and all the artists for taking part. Um, absolute privilege being able to 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 work with with all of you. And uh, thank you, John, for hosting tonight. And um, great meeting you guys. Mm. Oh, nice. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, I've just dropped the, the link to the catalog if anybody would like to see it in the chat. Okay, great. Also, I'd like to thank uh, Joyce. Uh, she uh, wrote all the artist profiles and um, I had her for a couple of semesters in uh, my advanced photography classes I teach and and um, really appreciate her helping on that. Yeah, thank you, Joyce. Fantastic <laughs> job. Great job. And she joined us tonight too, so. Thank you, Joyce. Great. Right. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you, Joyce. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a pleasure, you guys, and it was fun meeting you all tonight. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Like, no. like getting yeah. together with some friends because I know a little about you. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you have all the secrets there in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, not quite. <laughs> no, it was amazing. You did a huge amount of research on all those uh, the profiles. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Fantastic. And it was very it was readable and enjoyable as well. Yeah, it was a lot of fun learning about you guys and looking at your art. It was really, it was a learning experience for me and it was a yeah. lot of fun. Oh, that's lovely. That's great to hear. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, thank you for all your work. You're brilliant. Yeah, we're very honored. Thank you very much, everybody. Yeah, fantastic. Great. John, thank, thank you, you so much for all the great questions. Thank and well, thank, thank you, John. <laughs> oh, well, John. We'll see y'all next month. Great. Okay. <laughs>